Hello folks, Rob here back again with another disc dying video. Today's video, gonna do some chameleon cells. This time, some slightly bigger cells. And the plan is to do some uh, manipulating of those cells with a straw once they're all formed. So, we're gonna get started. Uh, I'm just gonna lay down a base layer here. I plan on reusing this bed a few times, so be generous with the base layer there. Put that back down. Just drop it to pop the bubbles. It's not quite working on all of them though. So we'll pop the sides and away we go. Um, colors I'm going to be using today, we'll start it off. We'll go with a nice bright red. I've got fire red here. Next up is deep orange. There might be a splash of neon hot orange in there. The yellow here is sun yellow. And this is all pro-chemical and dye mixed with Floetrol, just in these squeeze bottles, no oil mixed in. Uh, the green I'm using is a mix of fern and key lime, neon key lime. Blue is uh, some straight sonic blue for a nice rich blue. And our purple today is pansy. Uh, and there's probably some neon uh, purple mixed in with that pansy as well. And I'm just gonna lay down another set of those colors. Just a few camera issues here, getting it to focus folks. It gets resolved later in the video, but uh, for now it's gonna go in and out of focus a bit. Sorry about that. One thing I do like to do here is uh, use multiples of each color sort of thing. So um, for my red, I'm going to maybe add, this is flame scarlet just coming up on the edge here. Pushing all that in. Maybe a little neon orange as well. Just a strip. Throw some straight neon lemon zest in there as well. Pair up with our other sun yellow. Green, I've really been enjoying uh, aqua. So I'll mix in a strip of this aqua here as well. Uh, second blue, bright blue is pretty good for that. It's a good little pairing. And a second purple, uh, neon royal purple, just to pair up with the pansy. If you're trying this at home, this is completely unnecessary, but uh, I find it just makes things a little more interesting. It's a subtle change that you'll notice in when you dye discs like this, but it's just a little more variety in the colors that you'll see. At this point, I'm just filling in all the gaps here with my new colors. And I'm gonna go over the bed again, just to try and eliminate any of the white space that's showing. This purple here, that neon purple, tends to sink, so you gotta use a lot of it if you wanna use some. Um, and then after I'm done putting the stripes of color on, I'm gonna hit the top of the bed with a blowtorch because there's, a, I can see some bubbles. Uh, and that just happens when you shake up your mixture in the bottles, you get bubbles in it, so you gotta pop them. Uh, 
Uh, now, we'll zoom this out. We'll drag from the top down this way. our black over the top. It might have been wise for me to mix those. I kind of forgot to do my uh, my mix there. But I think this is fine. They're close enough together that uh, The results are going to be interesting regardless. drag from and I might add a little more there just a stripe there. this way when I drag it just keeps sort of refilling the well or that's the idea because the far end of this bed can get can be a little light on the coverage this is one of my longer dishes so you don't get full coverage in areas like that it's okay and we'll start our poking so I've got these spread out fairly wide and we're gonna be spreading these out about as wide as these tines are and we're trying to do the typical honeycomb that I like to do just even space everywhere in the gaps Just like that. Something I'm just figuring out you can do is if you have a few cells that aren't developing as quickly as the others, you can go ahead and poke them again in the middle of them and it will cause them to bloom out a little bit better. Okay. Bringing it back over. Okay, this is where... So that already looks pretty cool. I don't hate it. Um, but the objective here was to do a little shaping with the, we're going to use a straw here 
um, and just shape some of these up. Not sure which ones. I kind of like working in the middle, the middle ones here. This is sped up about 20 times speed. All I'm doing here is just gently blowing on each one, being careful not to blow too hard because you can, uh, you don't want to splash anything up, you just want to push stuff around. After all this is done, it kind of ends up looking pretty cool. It's like organic shapes, a little bit like graffiti. And I, I really love the result that came out of this. After all said and done, this is the result. Gonna throw a disc in there. All right, I got my white stig here. Gotta make sure to get that boy in there. That's my favorite one. Oh, I don't know if I got the whole thing. That is going to be upsetting if I didn't, because it sort of spread out as I put it in. But anyway, we'll cook this up and you'll get to see it right away. Here's the result. After a nice spin dial on the rim, nice little black spin to tie it all together, here's what I got. I managed to get this little fella in there. I really like that. Uh, this thing turned out super cool. I really like it. I think in the future, progressing on this technique, I might try. Because these do look like a bit like graffiti lettering, I want to see if I can put make letters out of some of these cells. That would be pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how feasible that is, but I'm going to give it a shot. If you like this video, guys, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more stuff, share it, leave a comment if you want to let me know something or uh, ask a question. Love to answer it. Until next time, happy dying, guys. See you later. Have a good one.